The next version of Android brings new features and design changes both subtle and controversial, while also giving us a hint of what's to come in the next generation Pixel phones. This is Android P, the next major release that'll eventually turn into pumpkin pie, popsicle or pancake or whatever. It's available as a developer preview now and the finished version 9.0 of Android should land sometime in August if Google's planned timeline plays out. As usual with new Android versions, there's a mix of flashy new user-facing features and powerful under-the-hood changes for developers, and as usual, be careful about reading too much into early preview builds of Android. As of mid-March, there's still five months of development time to go until Android P is fully baked. The Android P preview currently runs on the past two years of Pixel phones, meaning this is the end of the line for the Nexus series and Google's late Pixel C tablet as well. What can I say, Android on tablets right now is in a really precarious place. Anyway, it's not like Android P on phones doesn't give us plenty to talk about. Google acknowledges two of the biggest trends in smartphones right now with support for iPhone style notches, as seen in the Zenfone 5, Huawei P20 and countless other future devices. Since none of the Pixel phones actually have a notch, you can enable a virtual notch in the display settings to see how it'll look. Bringing OS level support for notches just makes it easier for developers to handle display cutouts in a sensible way. Most apps can just display as normal underneath the notch, but some, like video players, might need to know where the notch begins and ends to avoid unsightly cutouts in full screen video. Of course, virtual notches look hilarious on a phone like the Pixel 2, which already has pretty huge bezels. Android P will also have new APIs for devices with dual cameras. Not too surprising since just about everyone is doing dual cameras these days, but this new support in Android P lets developers use those cameras in a consistent way. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of what else is new in Android P, it's worth talking about what exactly this means for the next generation of Pixel phones. The Pixels are Google's reference devices for Android, the hardware it's built for. So if Android P is bringing notch support and dual camera support to the OS, well, it's not too much of a leap to expect a Pixel 3 with dual cameras and a screen notch. In that same way, Android Marshmallow introduced fingerprint support to the OS just as the Nexus 5X and 6P introduced the hardware to support it. Google rarely introduces support for new hardware features without releasing a Pixel or Nexus phone that includes that hardware. In terms of UI, there's a lot of new visual stuff in the Android P preview that, honestly, may well change between now and launch day. Still, the broad strokes of Android's new look are interesting. The Pixel Launcher has rounded tab for an app drawer, the notification and quick settings area has been completely redesigned with new rounded icons, the mini menus that used to live behind those icons are gone by the way. Also simplified, Android's Do Not Disturb options, which are now boiled down to a single setting with more customization behind it. Oh, and there's now a quick setting button for alarms too, so you don't need to drill down to the app to toggle them on or off. Meanwhile, the notification area is a bit more curvy with rounded corners on the notification cards, and the same change can be seen in the lock screen too. Google's also experimenting with use of the product Sans font in more places. That's the Google font that you see in the At A Glance widget and a handful of other places in Oreo. And the settings app showcases a new look with more colors and refreshed animations. Android P's animations are now quicker, and buttons, menus, and other parts of the UI look a bit cleaner. There's less of an emphasis on shading and layers compared to the early days of material design. So this is still an evolving design language, and the Pixel 3's UI won't be exactly what we see here, but the underlying trends of more circles, more rounded corners, and a de-emphasizing of some of the layers and shadows of stock Android as it exists today are good clues as to Google's future design direction. For the first time ever, Android P moves the system clock over to the left with the notification icons. It's pretty obvious this change is meant to accommodate display notches, and if you're a long-time Android user then this will look, well, a little bit weird to begin with, particularly as some types of notch will dramatically limit the space available for notification icons over on the left. There's no guarantee every phone updated to Android P will adopt this new clock placement, but it is interesting to see how this is now the default layout even on phones without the notch. This extends to the notification shade, where the top portion is now entirely black, obviously designed to fit in with the display cutout if it's there. Elsewhere, Google is improving notifications for chat apps by letting them show inline images and previous answers, alongside Allo-style predictive answers. It's all but impossible to show this all working in the current build, but these screenshots from Google should give an idea of what to expect. It's a nice addition and provides a bit more context than what we're used to in current builds of Android. There are some important privacy and security improvements too. Apps can no longer snoop on your camera and microphone in the background, and in terms of physical security, the new optional lockdown mode can require a pin or pattern every time you unlock, temporarily disabling the fingerprint scanner and smart lock. 
Right now it lives in the expanded power menu which has also grown a handy screenshot shortcut and actually screenshots themselves have become easier to annotate, crop and share with a new markup app included in Android P. Like I mentioned earlier, Google is once again overhauling the settings menu in Android P, and one area to receive particular attention is the battery settings. A lot of the detail of older battery screens have been stripped away, Android will now only highlight apps if they're causing problems. As always, it's possible these changes will be walked back in future updates. The main message here is that on a modern Android phone you shouldn't really have to worry about battery life. Right now in the developer preview, if you need to get back to the old Oreo battery settings page, you can find it under developer options. And if you are worried about running out of juice, there's an updated battery saver feature with more scheduling options. And to make your battery levels easier to track, ambient display has been tweaked too, and now shows your battery percentage at the bottom of the screen. And finally, Android P brings one potentially huge change for indoor navigation in mapping apps. Wi-Fi RTT positioning, that stands for round trip time, can accurately determine your position based on the time it takes nearby Wi-Fi networks to respond. Okay, it's a bit more complicated than that, but the bottom line is Android P should help anyone that's ever been frustrated by unreliable GPS positioning in a busy airport or shopping mall. Based on where we are with the Android P developer preview right now, we should get final APIs sometime in June. That's the point at which the pre-release version of Android is usually considered stable enough to run on your main device. The stable final version for Pixel phones should come a couple months later in August if all goes to plan. That means we'd expect the next round of Pixel phones later in the year with at least one of them being produced by HTC. When they arrive, expect dual cameras, notches and an evolution of the design and feature set we see in this early developer preview. Stay tuned to Android Central and subscribe so you don't miss our Android P and Pixel 3 coverage in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.